Network Dojo. Hey everyone, Jeff Rensink here from Network Dojo, and I want to talk about uh, some strategy and some options that you can use for the extra potential time you might have in the design section of the CCIE lab. Now, uh, this video will apply to any CCIE track, not just wireless, uh, because we all have the same sections uh, on the same formatting of the lab. So uh, with that being said, what am I talking about when I talk about extra time in the design section? Well, just, uh, just some quick background information. The design section is a total of up to three hours, lasts a total of up to three hours. Uh, it could be full three hours and it could be less. You can end it early. So as you work your way through the design section, you're going to be presented with a list of questions in order. Uh, as you answer a question, you cannot go backwards. So you can only move forwards in the question pool. What that's going to mean is either uh, you run out of time and you don't answer all the questions or you'll answer all the questions most likely with some level of time left at the end. And since you can't go back and change anything, you have a choice of what do you do with this extra time. They allow you to end the section early so that you can start the do section sooner. And the do section is the config section for those who aren't um, familiar with the new terminology of the sections here. Um, now, we, if we choose to start the do section early, that doesn't mean we get additional time for the do section. The do section is always five hours max. Uh, you can end the do section early if you want, but you can't uh, take extra time that was left over in the design section and apply it to the do section. So, you know, theoretically, let's say that you ripped through the design section, you're done in two hours, you have an entire hour left over. You can't take that extra hour and get a six hour do section. You can end it early and then still have your five hour do section. But um, rather than just sort of uh, throw away that extra time, let's maybe think through some things that we might use, uh, might be able to do in that time so that we can uh, be more effective in what we do in the do section. So I've kind of listed out into some high level uh, items here and then we'll talk about them one at a time. But high level, uh, we can use the bathroom during this time. We can do some thinking or planning during this time. Uh, we can leverage the scratch paper that's available to us. We can leverage the text editor that's available to us on our uh, lab PC. We can uh, get some cisco.com documentation up and open, and we can do some actions to sort of control our body and our emotions. So let's kind of hit one of these in a little bit more detail one at a time. So using the bathroom, uh, kind of a straightforward uh, suggestion here, but um, it's one of the only times outside of lunch when you can use the bathroom and not have it really count against you. So perfect time to use the bathroom if you need to at this time. Uh, if you don't really need to use the bathroom, uh, I mean, odds are lunch isn't super far away at this point in time. You know, we're you know two, two and a half hours in, uh, maybe a little bit more into our lab. Lunch might be, you know, only an hour or two away. So it's not like you have a long wait for lunch, but if it's definitely something that's uh, starting to get noticeable, Awesome. Use the bathroom. Uh, do some thinking and planning. So one, remind yourself of your plan. You should hopefully have a plan before you uh, step into the lab environment here. Uh, so you know what it is that you want to do. Remind yourself because it's very common for people to sort of kind of, yeah, have a plan. But then once you start executing in the do section, it just sort of falls apart and you completely forget what it is that you wanted to do. Um, so Remind yourself about that. Tell yourself, hey, if I'm you know, stuck on a troubleshooting issue for so many minutes, I'm just going to walk away from it. I'll do some other stuff. I can always come back to that thing. Stuff like that. Uh, you can also start thinking uh, about what did we see in the design section and what might be the implications in the do section. There's supposed to be uh, this overarching story that uh, traverses both sections of the lab. So the idea is supposed to be hey, the things that we're talking about, the things that we're choosing in the design section will be manifested in the do section. And so if you get a bunch of tasks related to particular technologies, there's a really good chance that you're probably seeing those technologies in the do section of the lab. And if that's the case, awesome. You can think about those technologies and maybe you know get some things top of mind that you want to be remembering about those technologies uh, ahead of time. Uh, use your scratch paper 
you know, things that you could be using on the scratch paper. You can make drawings and diagrams. And you might think, well, how can you make a drawing and diagram when we haven't seen the do section? Well, there might have been information in the design section that gave you some good high level information. And so we're not making detailed drawings per se, but you know, we could maybe make some high level uh, type things here. Uh, if your CCIE track has kind of all physical gear, you might already kind of know what the topology is going to look like because uh, the physical connections on those devices are, are fairly locked into place. They generally don't mess around with those uh, throughout the course of a given version of a lab. And so once the physical stuff is there, uh, the only thing that they really mix up might be logical designs on top of the physical. So if you know kind of the physical design of your lab, you can know generally what to expect there. Uh, write out any sort of uh, tracking structures, charting structures that you want to do. So, you know, task tracking structures, and you'll fill in the information later. Uh, if you want to have charts for, you know, maybe um, device names and IPs or something like that uh, that you want on your scratch paper, you know, again, you can sort of fill out the structure of that. That's not to say that you you need, you know, structured charts and stuff like that. No. And tracking might just be more of an on-the-fly thing that you don't actually have like a really rigid structure that you're filling in that's fine too uh, just talking about things that you might do if this is something that applies to you write out checklists you know maybe you have your plan and so you have a, a general order of operations and so you could sort of write that order of operations out and sort of check it off as you go along um, write out notes any, any notes that are going to be helpful to you create origami um, yeah obviously that's a joke but uh, really don't do that because don't don't make the life harder on your proctor you know walking in there and finding a, an origami crane in your scratch paper. Um, they might not find it as funny. Use the text editor. So the text editor available to you on the lab uh, PC is available to you from the very beginning of the lab, including the design section. And it should persist as you move from one section to the other. So you can have it open, uh, write stuff in, and then as you end the design section, move into the do section, that text editor stays up and all of your stuff should stay inside of there. So um, you can do anything on the scratch paper uh, that works on a text editor electronically. So maybe you prefer to do things electronically. Awesome. You could write up common configurations for easy copy paste. So uh, some people are just gonna have some standard configs that you wanna apply every time. Uh, those can include things like aliases that you wanna apply. Uh, there, maybe there's just a few standard commands that you might put on different devices as sort of a, a regular thing that you do regardless of what's being asked of you, awesome. You can sort of pre-write those out ahead of time. Uh, you're, you might have some likely configs that you expect to be asked about. Again, it's gonna be kind of track dependent, but certain tracks tend to have some very, very common things that you're asked to do. So for instance, if your track happens to have a management platform, which I think a lot of them do now, at least with uh, DNA Center, and so, cool, if, if you're being asked to work with DNA Center or Prime infrastructure or something like that, odds are you're probably adding devices to that server, right? And so that implies things like SNMP, uh, CLI-based management. So make sure that you just sort of have those configurations sort of written out. Sure, you won't know things like the communities or the users or passwords or things like that, but you can at least have the, the structure of the commands filled out that you can then fill in uh, with the other information. Or maybe it's going to be based off of things that you saw in the design section. So if the de design section had uh, some questions about a particular technology, there's a reasonable chance you might see that technology show up in the do section. And so you can stage up some configurations uh, surrounding those technologies. So uh, this could be a very sort of helpful thing for just efficiencies when it comes to the do section there. User prepare Cisco.com documentation. Uh, documentation, I believe, is available to us throughout the entirety of the lab. And again, it should persist as you move from one section to the other. They're just open in their own individual browser windows. So you could uh, just, you know, generically uh, get the, the documentation page open. You could open up individual docs that you find might find useful, whether just generic configuration guides, or again, sort of basing your decisions off of what you saw in the design section maybe opening up some tech notes for individual technologies that you expect that you might need to, you might need to configure in the do section there. And you could even go so far as to uh, read a little bit of it to, to refresh some things in your head. But that last one, hopefully we're not needing to do something like that. That's usually like, Oh crud. 
they uh, are talking about this technology, and that's one of the technologies I'm weak on. So if you have extra, extra time, you could do a, a little bit of quick reading on that technology to uh, try to refresh a few things in your brain there. And then finally, try and control your body and emotions. So coming out of the design section, you know, we might be in a little bit of an elevated state, kind of an amped up state where, um, you know, heart rates up and you're maybe a little bit frazzled coming out of that. And maybe we just want to kind of calm ourselves down and get ourselves back to a, a little bit more steady state. So, you know, do some breathing techniques. Um, hopefully, you know, if you're someone that has used breathing techniques before, you know what to do. But, you know, just look up a few just uh, calming uh, breath techniques is pretty easy to, to pick up. You know, just uh, slow breaths in and out, closing your eyes, just being aware of your body as it's, you know, filling up with air and, and expelling that air. Things like that is usually a, an easy way to fairly quickly sort of bring yourself back to a little bit more calm state. Uh, maybe you, you had a rough go of the design section and so you're in a little bit of a demoralized state coming out of that. So some positive self-talk might hopefully reorient your uh, your outlook and get you in a better mindset to take on that do section. Or you know what? Maybe you just want to psych yourself up. That's like your personality. You do well when you're really um, in a psyched up pers- uh, situation. So cool. You know, say stuff in your head. Um, think of some rocking songs in your head, whatever it is. So uh, use the time to just do a quick little self-check on your mental state, your physical state. And see if you can do some, uh, take some actions to uh, set yourself up so that as you move into that do section, you are in the state, hopefully, that you want to be physically and mentally there. So just a a reasonably short list of potential options. Just want to, you know, one, just remind you that, hey, there is this extra time that we could potentially do something in where it's going to help us in that do section. And then to uh, what are some potential options? And this isn't the, an exhaustive list, so you can absolutely come up with uh, other things that you might be able to do. But um, hopefully this gives you at least a starting point on some things that you could be thinking about.